Hi, welcome to the program, Faith for Every Nation. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. I'm Pastor Mark and Trina's daughter, and we are just so honored that you're joining us for the program today where my parents are talking about faith. I know you're gonna be strengthened. I know you're gonna be encouraged. Don't go anywhere. Wait right there and come back at the end, and I'm gonna tell you how to get a free gift. Now, let's get right into the Word. It's now time for Mark Hankins faith for every nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. I wonder if Jesus saw your faith. Wonder what Jesus would do when he saw your faith. Whoa, so Jesus was teaching the word. So faith is not just a mental thing. It's not just something you hear. It's not intellectual. Just saying the right thing. It is an act. But it's an act. It's spirit. It comes out Uh, of your heart. And just start. You know, remember when Brother Hagin, he was paralyzed. He was he had several incurable diseases, yeah. heart, etc. He was paralyzed in the bed for mm-hmm. months and months. And he started meditating on Mark 11, 23, 24. And the Holy Spirit started working with that and said, a, a, a healed person shouldn't be laying in the bed. Mm-hmm. That's what he said. Started challenging him to, to act, move. to move. move. And here he was just laying in there. But... He began to even conceive he, <laughs> with his thoughts, himself getting out of bed. Yeah. It had to begin there, you know. And then he asked for shoes. Uh, did he ask for shoes? Maybe the next day he did. But he decided he was going to get up out of that bed. Hmm. And he and had all he, kinds of pictures of him laying on the floor, couldn't get up. It, yeah. Paralyzed. And he just started moving. He got his legs over. He got the word. And then he started moving. Mm-hmm. Because faith is an act. It's an act. So Wigglesworth said, uh, no man looks at appearances if he believes God. Mm-hmm. I mean, you walk by faith, not by sight. So no man looks at appearances if he believes God. And then he said, I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by how I feel. I am moved by what I believe, and I believe God. And you know, uh, Brother Hagin had that faith in God, but before he got out of bed, it was months of reading Mark eleven twenty three again and again, yeah. meditating, mm-hmm. letting that word just saturate his, his imagination, mm-hmm. his heart, until faith got in. I believe you know, I receive. I like Mark eleven twenty two. It says, "Have." Yeah. Faith in mm-hmm. God. Have the God kind of faith. I think that's a process, you know, of having, letting that the word saturate yeah. you until you become one with it. Mm. And then you see, oh, that's possible. That's po-. And it changes your imagination. Yeah. It changes your, that's so faith important. In God. I remember talking with Alicia the other day about Dylan and how important it was because mm. she had this, imag- this dream, I think, that Dylan was going to die. And so she had to get a grip. Now, how many know all your dreams don't come from God? They don't. <laughs> Some things you gotta And a lot of your imagination sure don't come from God. Don't. So the if they're not in agreement with the word of God, you gotta get a grip on it and pull it down. And so that's what she did with the word. I said, did, where'd you get those scriptures? She said, I got them the scripture myself. I got my own scripture. Yeah. You know? She wrote them down, began to speak them and say them. And then others came in Mm -hmm. agreement, Caleb, you know, until, you know, they were getting a grip. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just a skinny thread of faith. Mm -hmm. It was a big, you know, cord. (laughs) Mm -hmm. It couldn't be broken. And we all just grabbed a hold with you. Praise the Lord. And that faith went into the very heart of God Mm -hmm. and it it was the God kind of faith. Mm. So when we meditate on the word of God, 
His faith begins to work mm. inside of us where it's, you have faith, you know, natural faith, but when you have mm. the God kind of faith that is born out of meditating, becoming one, fellowshipping with God over his scripture, mm. and he speaks to you, and that's what he meditating, did with Brother Hagin. Meditating is, is where you uh, receive the word, mm. And then you mix faith with that word and you meditate on the word and the Holy Spirit paints pictures of you in that word. Mm -hmm. And while you're meditating on the word, that's the difference between just studying and meditating. Studying's good, reading the word is good. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you meditate, uh, the, Jeremiah said, your words were found and I did eat them. Mm -hmm. So you just uh, get better. You don't wanna invite people over to your house to study fried chicken. You, you invite them over it. to eat fried chicken. <laughs> You'll get a better group of people to come. So a lot of times people are only studying fried chicken when you need to take the next step and eat the fried chicken. And so the word of God through meditation was designed to be digested into you and grafted into you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're not just wanting to study fried chicken or study faith. We're wanting to feed on that and release our faith and mountains shall be removed. And Jeremiah said, thy words were found. And so I did you eat found them. them. That's what Alicia did. She found the word for herself. And I did eat them, it says. And they were to me the joy and mm -hmm. rejoicing of my heart. Hallelujah. Praise God. And that's when your uh, faith begins to spring up wow. and action starts coming. And, so, and Rejoicing is a part of that because uh -huh. in Psalms 119, 162, he said, I rejoice at your word like someone who just found a great spoil. Right. Well, a great spoil would be like someone just gave you a million dollars. So the word of God is not just to be studied. Dad Hagen said the word will work for you when you get thrilled with it. In other words, I rejoice. Come on, I said, I rejoice. I rejoice Lord. over your word yeah. like I just found a million dollars because <laughs> I know exceeding great and precious promises. And Abraham staggered not at the promise of God, right. but became strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded what God has promised he is able to perform. In other words, while I'm believing, rejoicing, receiving. And it says he became strong in faith while he was praising. So that's mm. a process. Yeah, Just start right. taking that word, start looking at it, meditating on it, and then start praising. Wow. He went to the next level, start praising. Yeah. And what happens? He started looking away from his old mm. body and he started looking to God, the eternal God. Mm. All things are possible with him. Praise God, praise God. And so your eyes are off of this mm. awful situation and your eyes are turned to the one who can wow. change it. And there's no such thing as unchallenged faith. That's so true. The moment you start believing God and acting on the word, the enemy will come to your mind. Satan will say, if that's so, and then he'll say, look at this or look at that. I'm always thinking of what dad Hagen said. He said, never fight the devil in the arena of sight, feelings, or circumstances. Always make him fight you in the arena of faith. He said, because if the enemy says, let's fight, so he brings a challenge and he'll say, how do things look? Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Mm -hmm. You're in his arena and he will whip you every time. Mm -hmm. But if you say, Mr. Devil, I don't fight there. I fight over here in the arena of faith. Mm -hmm. And that means I believe God. I agree with God. I'm speaking the word of God. I'm acting like God is my God. I'm acting on that word then you win every time in the arena of faith. And sometimes you need some help. That's when you need your four crazy yeah, you friends. Do. Yeah. Let's all come together. We need some help. We need to push this thing through, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, just talking about uh, my sister, Liddell. She had a heart failure and here she was dying in the hospice. She looked like she was gone. She did. She was on a breathing machine and looked there. And we looked like Abraham. Up, looked. We looked at that. We knew that, but remember, Steve's here and we came to the house and we got together and we got our eyes off of that impossible picture of my sister with all these tubes 
And we began to sing, and Steve got his guitar out. Mm. Get that praise going. Your praise is your faith praising. talking and singing. And, and we, we started rejoicing. The same, if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, hallelujah, it'll quicken your mortal body. And we began to sing that song again and again until, you know, you just don't sing it once. Yeah. Sing it again. You don't just meditate once. You sing it. Keep on singing until you just get saturated. And once you get saturated, it starts mm. running over. Yeah. Why do we get happy in church? Because we're running over with wow. the praise, with the song. And wow. that's when you start acting. Yeah. And faith is an act. Yeah. So that praise is We started is an act. praising, rejoicing. Yeah. And the next and day the we went there, it. she came right out yeah. of the coma. And she is, uh, man, she's doing well. She's going strong. And the doctor said she's just not going to make it. But she made it. Hallelujah. Going strong. Uh, have faith in God. Amen. And, and we so started when, singing just a little bit. And after a while, we were all dancing. We were dancing. Even the <laughs> non-dancers were dancing. Yeah. <laughs> Let's try that again. I said, even the non-dancers were dancing. Because when you need a miracle, you say, I don't care what I look like right now. And boy, they started dancing. You get in the face of God. <laughs> Once you get in the face of God, his power comes into you. And you just say, oh, Ooh. all things are possible. This is working. <laughs> Hallelujah. It reminds me of that story I used to tell years ago. Because there was a man in town who had a tire business. I can't remember oh, the yeah. name of that tire business, yeah. but he came on TV at least three, four, five times a day. Um, I was at Allied Discount Tires, something like that. And he was on TV advertising all the time. And so <clears throat> anything you watch the news, here comes this guy from Allied Discount yeah. Tires. And first he'd start off his ad every time like this. Hello, neighbor. He said, tires ain't pretty, but everybody needs tires. And you need some tires, you come and get them from me at Allied Discount Tires. <laughs> So five times a day, hello, neighbor, tires ain't pretty, but everybody needs tires. So you come get your tires for me. <laughs> you got it. And so one day we were in a meeting and, and the Lord was telling us, you know, praise and rejoice. And the Lord said to me, hello, neighbor. He said, faith ain't pretty, but everybody needs faith. So you better release your faith right now. And I went, whoa, praise the Lord. I, I'm convinced some people would receive from God better if they didn't have to be pretty all the time. Hey, Mark. Sometimes you got to get ugly. Remember, remember that one group, and they, they kind of got ugly? And your I know that said, group. Your friend said. My friend. My friend he said, ooh, them girls ain't afraid to get ugly for Jesus. So, <laughs> so these four crazy friends just got ugly, man. They couldn't get in the door, couldn't get in the window. They came on top of the roof, knocked a hole in the roof. So... Um, <laughs> Sometimes you just got to get undignified. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. When you need a miracle. Yeah. Woo, boy, they started jumping. And when Dylan uh, was, was first taken from here, I mean, Leach and Caleb, uh, Dylan was, um, that was at our camp meeting mm -hmm. three years ago or something. And he was taken, we took him to the hospital here. And they immediately, they tested his blood and they said his a uh, white blood cell count was at what? 500,000 or something, which is supposed to be, I don't know, 10,000, 500. They said, we got to get, so they took him to Lafayette. The time we got to Lafayette, they had him. Uh, Intubated everything. Yeah, all tubes in him and, and he's starting to swell up there. And so we just got our four crazy friends. So I got David and Vicky and, uh, and Caleb and Alicia's down there. I can't remember, but it's mostly us, right? We got down there and got around that bed. Aaron and, Aaron. and uh, huh? The kids, Aaron and Aaron. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Aaron and Aaron. And so we got down there, and, and Dylan was laying up there, and it just looked like he was dead already. And I'm telling you, that's, that's your grandson. And uh, that's your son. And so we were like, we got around that bed, and, and David, Vicky, we're going to believe God right now. All right. And so the doctor said, well, we're going to try this and we're going to try that because the, the breathing machine wasn't working. He wasn't breathing. And so, well, what if that doesn't work? And one of the doctors said, failure is not an option. Amen. I thought, what a good doctor. Failure is not an option. How I many of you know there are some good doctors? I said, what a good doctor. Come on. While the people saying, what if that don't work? He said, failure is not an option. 
Whew. You ought to look at somebody right now and say, failure is not an option. Not in other words, we hadn't been thinking about the failure. No. We hadn't even been planning on what we're going to do if we fail. Because failure is not an option. You ought to be shouting online right now, too. It's a word for for now. Yes, amen. It's a word for the world. It's a word for the nation. It's a word for our nation. Amen. Failure Failure is is not not an an option. option. We're not thinking about it. We're not planning on it. We're not wondering what's going to happen if we don't make it. Because we're going to make it. Because God. Just looking out here, I wish y'all could be here in this room. My goodness. Now, then you could if you just get in the just car. Get in the car. <laughs> God there's, would make a way. There's such a company of faith. Faith. A spirit of faith. I'm telling it's like sparks are flying. It's like fire. Fire. Yeah. yeah. And you might just be feeling, come in feeling, oh, man. But in this atmosphere, failure is not an option. It's not going that way. So the darkest, horriblest, is that a word? Imagination. I don't know, but it'll work. Or thought that has come in your mind and stayed there or reports or whatever, just bind it up. (laughs) That's failure. It is not an option. We're not going that way. My family's not going that way. My kids are not going that way. I'm having what the Bible says. (laughs) I believe God. <laughs> it shall be what God ha, ha, ha. said. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha. And so the devil's constantly trying to bring fear and torment. Failure's not an option. He is a spirit of fear. Wow. Woo. There has been such fear in the Anytime earth. you're dealing with doubt, it's fear. You it's know you're dealing with the devil. It's the devil. And so when I was acting on the word in, in this area concerning even giving years ago, uh, doing some extreme things, then the devil said to me, what are you going to do if that don't work? And I was like, it ain't going to be pretty. I can tell you that. Because <laughs> we going down in grand style, baby. <laughs> and I, I'm like, Dad, hey, and I said, I'll just tell the Lord he wasn't big enough to put it over. That's what Dad Hagen said. He said, well, Lord, if I go oh. under, I just tell everybody you wasn't big enough to put it over. In other words, you're just a believer. God's the performer. No pressure on you to make it all happen. Matter of fact, God can do more if you'd quit acting the way you're acting, you know, worried and stressed out. <laughs> he just needs a little bit of what are you gonna do? So the Lord said, don't take that fear. He said, you say back to the devil. Devil, what you going to do when it does work? Because I'm going to testify of the goodness of God and the word of God and the power of God. Woo! Amen. So we have this card in the front of it. I don't know if we've ever given it out or not. It's called failure is not an option. Faith is the victory. And on the back of the card, I list the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine scriptures that specifically say God is able. Now we know God has the ability, but there's nine scriptures that said God is able. Now, why would he tell you that? Well, it comes to the, to the blind men in uh, Matthew chapter 9, 28, 29. Jesus said, the two blind men, he said, do you believe I am able to do this? Mm-hmm. They said, yes, Lord. And he said, according to your faith, so be it unto you. He touched their eyes. In other words, why did he bring that up? Well, you understand God is able, nine scriptures, to make you stand, make your church stand, your marriage stand. God is able. 
In other words, you're trusting his ability. God is, God is able to make all grace abound towards you. In other words, we're not trusting our ability. He is able. It's his ability yes. in the area there of your finances because, come on, anybody could have told the blind man, well, I would, I would be glad, you know, even their mother, come on, their family would say, I would, I would open, I would heal your eyes if I could. Come on, you could have anybody in this room come up to everybody and say, you know, I would like to buy you a new house. You go, but I'm not able to. You're like, well, that's really cute. <laughs> Listen, in other words, God doesn't just tell you, I, it's my will, come on, for you to prosper, and it's my word for multiplying your seed zone. God said, I actually have the resources and the ability to perform it and to pull it off in your life. So when you say, yeah. God is able God in every able. situation God to make all able. great. In other words, I'm trusting his ability right now, not my ability. Not just somebody tell me what they want to do for me. God is able to do that for you. Come on, so the blind men could have had their mother, their sister saying, I would love to be able to heal you guys, but they can't do it. But Jesus said, do you believe I am able to do that for you? Said, yes, Lord, he said, according to your faith. So Hallelujah. So he is able, your faith accesses his ability. That's why you're laughing. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if he was, then he is right yeah. now. He's able. Yeah, his ability. Huh? Praise the Lord. I, I'm telling you, God is there. able to make your ministry, your church, your life stand. His ability in your body, his ability in your mind, his ability in your finances. God is able. God is able for you. My God. He's able to do. Hallelujah. To do exceeding abundantly above all you can ask, I think. We'll go ahead and shout about it right now. Shut the lion's mouth. Ooh, I said God is able to shut the lion's mouth. Come on and deliver you from the hand of the enemy. God is able to do that. <laughs> You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Anytime God wants to change someone's life, He touches their mouth. One act of faith will open up the supernatural and cause the glory of God to come in. When you hold fast to your confession of faith, you're connected to Jesus' victory. In this book, Faith Opens the Door to the Supernatural, you'll learn how believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural in your life. God has given every believer a measure of overcoming faith the spirit of faith will take the victim out of your voice and put victory in your voice. It doesn't matter what you may be going through. Failure is not an option. With the three CD set, The Spirit of Faith is Tough, you'll learn to walk in victory every day. You'll also get the free book, Never Run at Your Giant With Your Mouth Shut. The Bible story of David and Goliath gives us a picture of how faith in God is released through faith-filled words. There is a miracle in your mouth. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Call us at 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. You know, many times we complicate faith. We make it this big, hard thing. And, you know, I've had so many people come to me and say, man, I just, I, I wish I knew how to have faith. I wish I knew how to grow my faith. Or I wish I had faith like you. Well, you can. You know, faith comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. So if you want to grow your faith, it's very, very simple. And, you know, that's what I like about this book. Faith opens the door 
to the supernatural because it doesn't complicate faith. It makes it very simple. This is how you have faith. This is how you activate your faith. And now we move on to praise and thanksgiving and moving into the manifestation of the things that we're believing God for. It teaches us how to walk like faith would walk and how to talk like faith would talk and live like faith would live and how to get the answers that we are believing God for. This book will change your life. If you're believing God for something and you're in the middle of a fight, I encourage you to get this book. It will help you get the answers and it doesn't have to be hard. It's an easy thing. So I encourage you, if you want this book, the information is on the screen. You can call or go to the website. And we also have this free book for you today, Never Run at Your Giant with Your Mouth Shut. This is a fun book, it's an easy read. And you know what, I even have my kids read this book because it's not hard, it's not complicated. It tells about the story of David and running at your giant and keeping your mouth open, declaring the word of God and not giving up till you knock the giant's head off. This is a fun book. You need to get it for someone, even if they're not even saved and you, and you wanna help them understand faith and help them understand their walk with God, get this book. You can get it for your kids. My kids read it and I'm like, they, they think it's pretty cool. They think it's pretty entertaining. So this is a fun book and it's free. The best gift you can get is a free, free gift, right? So I encourage you to get this book today. Thank you so much for being with us today. Again, my name's Alicia Hankins Moran, and we're so glad to have you. We hope to see you again. Kenneth E. Hagen said, in the last days, the printed page will be the most effective distribution of the gospel. It's amazing to hear stories of people who have received our books in very remote places, such as prisons, deep in the bush of Africa, and many other distant lands. Our desire is to have our books translated and distributed in as many languages as possible. These books can be left with pastors and leaders who in turn can share the books with others. We believe people's faith will be ignited for many generations to come. We like to picture the distribution of the word like passing out ammunition to people. Once people have the right ammo, they are able to take their authority in Christ, live victorious, and make an impact in their world. Through the printed page, we are seeing an explosion of the reach the word is having around the world. Through your partnership, you are helping us to pass the necessary ammunition to believers around the world. The Lord continues to open the doors in new countries and languages for our books to be distributed. Our vision is to have the message of faith translated in a hundred different languages. Each project requires having the book translated, typeset, printed, and distributed. The initial cost for each project is approximately $5,000. Many partners and pastors have stepped up and sponsored one of the projects. Your World Mission Partnership of any amount makes a big difference. If you would like to sponsor one of the projects, there are many more nations to reach. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.